Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Devin Sears. I'm joined by my friend and colleague, Greg Baker. And today we are going to be talking about how to use the WordPress block editor to build a website. It's January, it's the first month of the year, and a lot of people have a goal to build a website this year, and we want to help them achieve that goal. A lot of the new users that we've heard of sometimes have a little bit of a difficulty understanding the WP admin, understanding where to go, what to click on, and how to get their website built. We love WordPress. We know it's a great tool that you can use to help build a website. But uh, we understand that sometimes it can be a little bit daunting if it's your first time building a website. So today we're going to go over a bunch of things, including how to navigate the WordPress dashboard and also how to use the block editor to build pages and posts in a great looking WordPress website. So we're glad you're here. Before we dive too much into the content, uh, as I mentioned before, um, I'm joined by Greg Baker. He is one of our Pro Design Live team members and pro support members, which basically means if you call Bluehost looking for help with your WordPress website, Greg is one of the guys that will walk you through that and can help you out. And I'm sure he'll talk a little bit more about um, how you can get in touch with uh, someone from his team if you need a little bit more help. But the point of these sessions and this webinar is to be educational and helpful. So if any of you have questions that you're hoping we answer during today's webinar, please drop them in the chat channel or the Q&A channel, and we'll do our very best to accommodate those questions. Before we jump into the rest of the content, there is one or two housekeeping items that uh, I'd like to cover. First of all, if you can hear us, if my audio is transmitting, please find the chat section and tell us where you're tuning in from. We always love to hear where our viewers and listeners and, and our attendees are joining us from. And uh, it helps us know that our, our audio is transmitting and that there's no technical issues. If you have questions that come up throughout today's webinar, please drop them in the Q&A tab. And if you have a hard time finding that, um, drop them in just the regular chat. And um, we will do our best to answer those questions as this goes along. And uh, there are going to be a few questions that I might not know the answer. Once Greg is off and running with the content, I'm actually going to turn my camera off so I can focus on answering all of those questions. But at the end of today's webinar, we will take a few minutes to hold some time and some space to, um, to ask some of the questions that I might not know the answer to and let Greg respond um, to everyone instead of uh, just hearing it from me. So um, we're excited for that. And if you have any anything else, if there's any technical issues that you run into, then uh, sometimes just refreshing the screen fixes it. Sometimes um, leaving the webinar and joining back in will resolve that. So, so what are we going to be covering today? We're going to jump into why you might want to use WordPress. There's a lot of options out there, and we strongly recommend WordPress, so we'll jump into that very briefly. Next, we'll get into how to navigate the WP Admin dashboard, and there's a bunch of things included in that. That's where you're going to spend most of your time when you're building your WordPress website. Some of the most important parts of that are themes and plugins. So we're going to touch briefly on that before jumping into actually creating a page and a post. And once we do that, we'll be jumping into the block editor. Greg's going to walk us through that, show us a bunch of different ways to add blocks, to build our pages, and then get into some extra settings and customization. And then we will finish off with uh, a short Q&A section for any questions that we might not have answered. So a lot to cover. Excited to get into it. So without any other further delay, Greg, take it away, my friend. All right. Thank you, Devin. All right. So first chapter, why use WordPress? With WordPress, it provides users a free website builder technically called a content management system, uh, but for simplicity's sake, we're going to call it just our little website builder since it builds websites. WordPress is responsible for more than 40% of active websites in the world. 
Um, I believe I've seen it fluctuate between 40 and 43%. So most of the world uses WordPress to build their websites out for whatever their purposes are. And the great benefit of WordPress as well, too, is there's no coding knowledge needed to build a website. Uh, with recent developments into the block editor, it is now more of a visual-based builder uh, versus having to know how, how to code, use HTML, CSS, PHP. The visual builder sits there and gets the uh, coding done for you. Navigating the WordPress, da WordPress dashboard is what really gets overwhelming sometimes. Um, this dashboard is going to be your back end. It is responsible for displaying the way your WordPress looks to the public. With that, there are settings you can modify back there that will affect the front view of the site. Um, as well as it will let you know information as well. Like if you're getting visitors to the site, if you have analytics set up, if there's a problem happening with a certain plugin, you will get a notification on that dashboard area. Um, this is your station to know what's going on with your WordPress and how it's functioning. I broke it down for today's lesson. Um, to five key areas that we're going to be working out of. Uh, the dashboard is what you'll log into. As you can see on this uh, little screen grab, uh, this is kind of what it would look like if you logged in through the Bluehost services there. Uh, we'll also be going into pages and posts, um, which is typically the content of your website there. That's where you create navigation. Um, you can go forth and write about uh, topics that you want to present to your audiences. And you can also create things like contact forms, um, whatever you dream of, pages and posts are going to help you achieve that. The appearance section is in control of your theme there. Uh, so whatever theme you decide to go with on WordPress there, um, that's going to control a lot of your styling and default settings with the WordPress here. Uh, finally, we do have a plugin section. Anything that's not defaultly within the WordPress right from the install there, that is the area you're going to go into to uh, find the stuff. Um, I understand if the screen grab is a little small for uh, users, uh, just know when we get into the live uh, portion of it, I'll be able to show you kind of a little bit more into it and how to function with the dashboard there. But just know there's only five key areas um, from the left side that you'll be working with there mainly. Key things to consider when starting. Um, your site title is going to be the title of your website. It can be your domain name. I like to let people know to use this as sort of your um, area where you can divert from the format of a domain name and actually give it the proper title that you intend the website to be. Your tagline is a little phrase that helps explain your site to the users. Um, you want to make it kind of quick. Uh, one sentence usually is the typical practice, but um, I don't believe there is a limit to how long you make the tagline, but just be known the longer you make it, uh, the more it can affect the layout of your website. So I would definitely keep it to about a sentence in length. The site language sets the language for your dashboard. Uh, with that, if you are more of a Spanish speaker, you'll want to switch the uh, site language to Spanish over English. Um, English also, you know, uh, we want to keep the language set so that way we can all uh, understand what's in the dashboard. No sense in making it a language that you don't understand. Time zone is another one to keep an eye on. Um, not typically too important. Um, however, this helps with scheduling purposes. So if you plan to have like scheduled posts or anything like that, um, this is where you want to really set that time zone for your own time zone or whatever time zone you want to go forth with in the um, display of your site there. All right, so now we'll get into the themes and plugins there. First things first you want to decide on is a theme. 
You can only have one active theme per WordPress website. Once you start building on that theme, it becomes extremely difficult to switch themes in the process. So you wanna make sure that you have the right theme that you wanna proceed on with there. Um, the definition of a theme is it's a collection of files that work together to produce a graphical front end interface with an underlying unifying design for a site. Effectively, the theme is what controls the style of your site, the look. Um, it contains a lot of global settings, uh, default settings. While you can modify a lot of settings within pages, uh, it's best practice to let the theme take over and style up your page versus just manually doing it from the page editor itself there. Depending on the theme with the WordPress update to 6.0 that introduced something called the site editor. We'll get a little bit more into it towards the end there, um, but just know that depending on your theme, uh, you'll wanna edit within either the customize or the site editor. Um, both areas will house the settings, but it will depend now that the site editor has been introduced to the WordPress community. Where you'll find your themes is in that appearance tab. I blew up a little bit of a screenshot there, so that way when you hover over appearance, uh, as well as any options that you hover over on the left side there, a little sub menu will pop up each time for the items. Um, Within appearance, that's where you're gonna find out where your themes are. So if you click on themes there, you'll be able to see what themes you currently have installed, uh, and then also what your active theme is. And as I said earlier, uh, one theme can be active at a time and definitely not recommended to keep switching between different themes there and such, um, but we may need to go in there for troubleshooting purposes. Uh, then also from this menu, you'll, be able to see that you'll either have the editor or customize. In this case, we have both. So the customize will always exist on this menu here. However, that editor option will vary based on the theme. If you see the editor, you're most likely going to be using the site editor to edit uh, global aspects of your website here. Uh, customize will do the same thing, but that's for uh, themes that do not support the site editor. Plugins. This is where a lot of people can get in a little bit of trouble when they're starting out here. So think of a plugin as a app on your phone there. Uh, whatever doesn't defaultly come with the WordPress there right out of the box, typically you might need coding for. With the assistance of the WordPress community, they've created a list of different plugins. There's hundreds upon hundreds of different plugins, new ones being added every single day. And with that, they add features that normally just don't come with the WordPress. WordPress was built to be a blogging website, uh, which then developed into just its full flesh uh, website builder there. A big example and a common one we help out with in the pro design side of things is with WooCommerce. That is how we establish stores on, on the internet. WooCommerce is an e-commerce platform and without it, you can't run a store on your website without the help of like a third party service or some kind of connection to a store that's off the WordPress. WooCommerce makes it so that way you have everything under one roof and you don't have to worry about any other services to help fulfill the need uh, for an e-commerce store on the internet. With that in mind that these add-in features, there are plugins out there um, that do one job. Um, there are some that do several different jobs. The best thing I could say is beware of plugin bloat. This is kind of a term that we use over in pro design uh, that shows that there might be somebody that has like a hundred plugins. And depending on what's going on with the website, if it's being slowed down, if there's conflicts, we would have to go through a hundred plugins to find out which might be the problem because it could just be one, it could be a couple of different ones. Um, so the less plugins, the better for optimization, the better for troubleshooting. Um, and yeah, you don't wanna have two plugins doing the same job. You don't wanna get a bunch of one job type of plugins. Um, it's best to find plugins that help cover uh, a variety of different things. 
When it comes to page and post creation, this is where I'm going to switch into the uh, screen I have pulled up here for us today, which is our dashboard for a little bit of a live edit here to um, a WordPress I have. So with this, um, as we can see here, we're currently logged into the dashboard area. And then we have our left-hand menu. As we hover over items, there'll be all sorts of different little menus that pop up here. Like I said before, posts and pages are your content for the site here and such. Uh, they both use what's called the block editor, which is the visual builder now that took place of the classic editor with WordPress there. Uh, so without further ado, we're just gonna go right into add new page here for us. And then once we get into the page here, it's a little bit zoomed in there for display purposes here. Um, so that way everybody can see what's going on here. Um, but typically, once you get in here, you'll want to go right into this add title box here and give it a title. For the sake of uh, time, we're just going to call this new page for website. Whatever you decide to title your page will vary based off of um, what you need that page for. If, for example, a contact page typically has a contact form on it, and we label the page as conf contact. Once you got the title in there, um, we have this area where it says type slash to choose a block, or you could just start typing away, which will then make it defaultly a paragraph block. There's a couple different ways to add blocks into the WordPress and just know blocks are used to build this uh, website. We build websites with the blocks there and depending on what you wanna display, the block will vary. So to access it, we have a couple different ways here. If you wanna just start typing, you can just start typing in there. It will give you a paragraph block, so it's just text. So like so, we'll just put testing out the paragraph and then as we see here now we have it set as a paragraph block here we can change up the alignment with some quick edits here we can attach a link there to it this options area here will give you sort of different options you can go forth into a menu you can duplicate the block and it will create a complete carbon copy of it there for you uh, you can add before add after We'll go into this create patterns in a little bit later. If you know HTML, you can switch it into HTML and start editing with your HTML knowledge. Or if you don't even need it, you can just go ahead and click delete there. And that will just remove the block there. If we ever want to add in something other than text, we have a couple different ways to go about it. The one I like going to first is this guy up here. It's a little blue box with a plus sign. Um, nice and out of the way, more noticeable for me. But as you'll see over here off to the right, we have also another area we can add blocks into here. Both areas add, can add the same blocks here. This one's a little bit more of a, what's the word I'm looking for? A uh, smaller view of the uh, what blocks you can go for. But if you have a uh, idea of what you wanna add in, Let's say, for example, we want to add in like a YouTube video. We have a YouTube block. We also, I think, have TikTok now going on with it. It's all sorts of different blocks here. Um, this is more of a quick, if you know what block you want, you can search it. You can click from the quick uh, list of different blocks there for it. Uh, if you don't know exactly what block we're use or you want to use, but you want to go forth and see what WordPress does have available, that's where this blue guy comes into play. It will bring it out on the left side here. Because we currently have the Wonder theme installed, we have access to what's called the Wonder Blocks. Um, that's exclusive to the Wonder theme here. And um, from here, they have all sorts of different uh, options you can go forth. If we go down a little bit further, this is where we get to more of our WordPress default ones. We have paragraph blocks for text. If you want to add in like a secondary heading, that's where this heading can come into play. And as we can see, the list goes on for different things, and they're all organized based on what you need. If it's text-based or code, it's going to be in this set of blocks here. 
our media items will be located here. So we can add images, videos, audio. You could probably even add a file. Yeah, you could add a downloadable file there as well there too. This is where we can get kind of our uh, pictures put onto the side there with some text there. Design-wise, this is where we can kind of get into some excess space there if we need some space between contact, a little page break, um, if it needs to go into multiple pages there for experience purposes there. Um, we get into a lot of deeper settings as we go further down to the things, your widgets, so on and so forth. The list goes on and on for what you have there. These options do change based off of the uh, theme you do have installed. So what may be available for one theme may not be available for another. In this case, we're just gonna add in a nice little picture. And then from here, we'll go forth, click on here. And from here, you can either, if you have an image already up in the media library, um, great, you can select it from there. This will open up the window. Right now, we don't have any images in our media library here. So with that, we would upload a file. So right away, we can either go into Upload, where then you can upload certain different files there and such. Or you have this Upload Files tab as well, too. Either or, both will upload the files there. Once the file is uploaded, you'll be able to select it. And you can even insert from URL as well, too which if you have a URL available for a picture you want, um, you could insert it from there as well. So that way you don't have to upload it into the media library there. However, if something does happen to that photo there, it would break as well for the website here. So we're just gonna delete this block here for now. And then we're gonna go into this right side panel. This is going to be containing more of the settings for your website or for your page um, or post, depending on who you what you're working on here. In this case, we're working with pages. And so with this, you have all sorts of different page settings there. I have some for Option Monster, Monster Insight, Yoast. Those will all be associated with the plugins. So if you have the plugins installed, they will show here. If the plugins are not installed or you have alternative plugins, there may be something different here. The featured image is set primarily there. I would recommend it more for posts than pages, but this is where you can set the image that's gonna be associated with uh, whatever page or post you're working on there. For SEO purposes, this may show up on Google there. Um, gets a little bit more advanced there, so we're going to bring it back on in and just focus to mainly have this area set for posts there because it has a lot more flexibility with a post than it does being a page there. Discussion, also uh, typically there for posts. That's where you can create a comment section if you'd like, depending on how you want to structure your post uh, for the website there. These are all the page settings, but then we'll also notice this little block setting there. These will up, the block settings will update based on the block selected. So in this case, we don't have a block selected right now, but if I click on testing out the paragraph, it will tell me what block I'm using there and then all the different settings. We have some entrance animations we can add in there if we want to add a little animation effect. And then the black and white circle typically is for styling purposes. You can change up the color of your text so we can make it red text. We can go forth and give it a background there. So then that way there's a little background in our text there and such. And then this one is specifically if you use this link function here. If you do link this text to a different one, uh, let's go ahead and just make this go to ESPN.com. So that way we can get a link set there. Oops. Let's go ahead and. And it, also a nice feature here is if you make a mistake like that, fear not, you don't have to redo the work again or anything. This little arrow guy up here will undo any edits that you may have recently made. So that way you can get back to an original state there for your site. Nice thing about links is actually you do have to highlight them for us and then click the icon. And then from here, we should be able to put in our link and then hit apply, which will then turn the text red make it a little hyperlink there for us. If we do wanna update the color to the links here, let's say we wanna make it black. So 
unlinked text will be red, but linked up text will be red or will be black. And then we also have this feature called hover, which when your mouse hovers over it, an effect happens. Uh, if you go into hover, you can also select the color for the link as well here. So in this case, we have set it to yellow. So when I hover it over with my mouse now, the text should be underlined and turned yellow, which perfectly we see right there. Once you finish all building out the website that you want to, uh, utilizing the different blocks here, um, going forth and building out the content that you want to display, that's where we have this key publish button here. We also have a save draft here. So if you're not quite ready to publish just yet, you can go ahead and save it as a draft to be worked on later. Once you hit publish, it will double check and make sure you wanna make sure that this page is ready for publish there, which you can cancel there if you don't want to. I usually just go ahead and publish it then at that point. Once it finishes publishing, our button is gonna update. Perfect, so now we have it all set here. We're just gonna close out this for now because we're not quite ready to view our website just yet. But as you'll notice, the button changes to update from the word publish. As we'll experience with building WordPress, um, there's always edits that need to happen. Some content needs to change. Um, home pages are susceptible to this. Uh, that's where the update button comes into play to be more of your save button at this point. Um, but you would only want to hit it in the event that you're ready for the changes to take place. If you are updating a website and you don't want to necessarily make the changes go live just yet. We can always switch the page to a draft state there. And then this will unpublish the post there for us. And then we can start using the save draft feature again. But then once we put it into a published state, the public will not be able to access it. So you use that as you please there. So we're gonna go ahead and publish this guy one more time here. And then, yeah, we'll just use update going forward there. And then let me just check our little slides here. All right, so now we're gonna get into more of this topic of customized versus site editor. Since we have a page on the previous screen there, um, that is what's called the block editor. The block editor is gonna be used as your pages, your posts, and your site editor. They all use the same blocks. Um, site editor will give you some more dynamic fields because that's gonna be responsible for a lot of your content that displays universally through the website there. So your main menu area will be editable within the site editor. Your links at the very bottom of your website, those will be edited within the site editor. The layout of how your pages display, that will be editable within the site editor there. It does still depend on the theme there. So the customizer used to be the area you would go into to modify these settings. Uh, and when WordPress 6.0 got released, that's where the site editor came into play for a lot more themes now. So more likely you'll start seeing the site editor be the go-to source going forward with WordPress. But right now you'll still see some sites with the customizer as the option there. And then other than that, again, uh, I put this screenshot in there because if you do have the site editor with your WordPress, you're going to want to use this editor feature there. And then if you have no editor, you're going to go right into customize. And those are pretty much how you access the global settings there for the website. And we could get into those, but it does vary based on the editor or on the theme itself there so if you have any questions as to what settings to modify or anything like that that's where my team with pro design live comes into play uh we are here to help you understand your specific setup uh if you have any questions in regards to certain themes there and such and work through those and then otherwise i think up next we have the q and a so I can have Devin come back on the screen here, and then I think we could take some questions from the chat there that we may have.
Awesome. I really appreciate that, Greg. Um, okay, let's jump in to some of these questions real quick. A uh, bunch of questions. A lot of people are really grateful for uh, what you walked us through. Let's just jump into some of the questions. Uh, first one I have here is I took an HTML class online and I want to use it on my WordPress website. So can I use custom HTML and CSS within the block editor through the WordPress dashboard? Yes. Um, I'm going to answer it first as yes, and then I'm going to come with some stipulations there. Uh, yes, if you have coding experience, you have ways to edit it. Um, it gets into more technical advanced fields there. We have HTML blocks you can use within the WordPress editor. Um, if you venture into the advanced areas within the block builder, uh, you'll also notice there's an HTML field there. The now, the caveat that I have with it is that when you start using code, you have to use code to fix any issues that may pop up. So if we're having an issue because you put in a bad line of CSS, um, my department, we can't really comment on how to co correct kind of coding issues. Um, it puts a lot of sites into predicament, so I would strive away from using coding solutions. But if you are comfortable with it, feel free to use it with your WordPress site. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and I, I agree with what you're saying. Once you start getting into that kind of customization mm -hmm. area, then it's it's a little bit harder for the next developer to come in and say, oh, I see what someone did here because it's it's a custom build. Uh, similar mm -hmm. to, you know, like if you have a car and you customize and modify the engine in a bunch, and if you take it back to the manufacturer, then oftentimes they're, they're not going to be as familiar with what to do to uh, fix any troubles you might have. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next question I have here is how can I collaborate with others using the block editor on a WordPress site through the dashboard? Yeah. So when it comes to the WordPress, um, there is a community with WordPress.org. It was created by individuals for the public to use and they have a whole learn section of work on wordpress.org where then you can go into the forms and conversate with others on how to use the blog editor uh, while forms are the only way to kind of communicate amongst the wordpress community we do offer a service with pro design live um, that will get you in touch with a WordPress expert, whether it be myself or one of my colleagues in the department there. And we are also a great resource as well uh, to help you navigate through the block editor and show you specific things that you may have specific questions for. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, and then someone asked, what are reusable blocks and how can they be managed within the WordPress dashboard? So when it comes to reusable blocks, that's where we've gone into more of a pattern. Um, let me go ahead and switch back to my screen here real quick. Um, so as we go back to our original uh, paragraph block here, you'll open this guy up for the three lines, and then you'll do what's called create a pattern. I recommend this typically if you have content that you're looking to repeat throughout the website, whether it be like a gallery or a certain layout that you're looking for to have on the pages there, you can go forth and create a pattern. Once the pattern is created, when you go into our little blue box up there, you're going to click on the patterns option here, and then you'll have all sorts of different patterns here. And I believe, well, let's go ahead and make our one pattern here because I don't think we have one created here. We're going to do test pattern. And then this is going to be a key feature because if you want it to update globally, you'll keep it synced. Otherwise, if you uncheck this, this will just put in the pattern but not update anywhere else throughout the site. So once we create it and we've made it unsynced for right now, should be able to go right on here and you'll have a nice little section that says my patterns that are all purely your patterns to put right back on into the wordpress here awesome and uh just just to add slightly to that there's no limit that i know of on how many blocks you can put into a pattern so 
That example obviously is fairly simple just with a paragraph and uh, the colored bar. But uh, if you wanted to add like a, a team member pattern and have like a, a bunch of your team members from your business or something, you could take the time to go through and add like a, a heading, uh, a profile picture, um, a link to their social um, profiles or, or mm -hmm. other areas. And then once you take the time to get that all exactly how you want, you could save all of those elements into a pattern like Greg was saying. And then you could just basically copy paste that pattern wherever you want it on the website. Correct. Okay. Awesome. Um, and can you just explain a tiny bit more about syncing and the, the global blocks? It, it looks like some people might not have completely understood that. Yeah. So typically when it comes to WordPress here, um, you can have global elements. You can have page specific um, patterns work in the same way as well, too. Uh, so if you have something that's synced as a pattern and you use that pattern throughout your website, you'll get the copy and paste effect. But once you update it, say, like on the home page and the same patterns on your contact page or an about page, it will update on those pages as well. So if you unsync it, then it just purely puts the content in there for you versus updating it on other pages and surprising you when you go back and check it later. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, and then next question that we have from the audience, do I need to be worried about blocks that are not mobile responsive? When it comes to mobile responsive, all blocks should have their own settings. Um, depending on what settings were modified, that can judge if something's going to be mobile responsive or not. Uh, typically, when it comes to those settings, they usually have an icon next to them to let you know that you can just switch them for the specific um, responsive mode that you're in. So if you have a problem on mobile, uh, you can make it just the change for mobile. Uh, there are some settings, though, that do get into that they do have to be changed on all three fronts. Um, so with that, it will just vary on the block. And if you ever need help, optimizing um, responsiveness there. Um, my guys at Pro Design Live, we're here to help you through and show you which settings you can modify, which ones you can't. At a glance, though, usually size um, is a common one that you can modify based on the different responsiveness, but like background color needs to be set on all three. Okay, awesome. Uh, let's see. Uh, someone asked, uh, I, I built a, a WordPress website a while ago and I'm not familiar with the block editor. Can I revert to the classic editor if I need to? And if I do, is there any, anything I should be worried about if I revert to the classic editor? Yeah. So the classic editor is now its own plugin on the plugin section. So when you go to add new, you'll be able to add the classic editor back. I would be wary because the classic editor takes away the visual aspect of things. Uh, so a lot of it is going to be kind of adding in your own HTML code to get the content that you want to display. So going back to our uh, student that was uh, taking HTML classes and CSS stuff, um, maybe that might be a perfect one for you. So that way uh, you can go forth and use the classic editor to input uh, different lines of code there and such. Um, it's just not recommended given that uh, the purpose of the visual builder is to kind of see what you're building, whereas the classic editor doesn't really give you that same feeling. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and, and um, I believe that currently you can download the classic editor as a, a plugin. You can't like revert back within the builder, but you can add it as a plugin that will kind of give you that look and feel. Mm -hmm. um, I heard at one point they were cautioning people that that is going to be perhaps uh, not updated and maintained as well. So if you're very reliant on the classic editor, you might be leaving yourself open for a little bit of a security vulnerability. So mm -hmm. um, I understand that it, it can be tricky to adjust to the, the new builder, but I would recommend taking some time to uh, try to dive into that and, and see if you can't um, 
get a little bit more used to it because it will be very, very beneficial in the long run. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, uh, next question. Are there any best practices for organizing and managing content within the block editor? So specifically content. Uh, yeah, it just make sure you're using the right blocks that you want to. Um, if you want to have a picture, use the image block. If you want to have some text next to it, there was a, a media and text block that we could use that puts uh, the text right next to it. Uh, with it being visual, you should be able to go forth uh, looking into it and seeing what blocks you're using and then seeing it build in front of your eyes there. Uh, best practice wise, I would also give the rule of thumb as well too, is that um, again, don't go into any kind of coding to get the solution for the look that you want. Um, that's where the right side panel that we were uh, changing up settings in, uh, that's going to be the best practice is to use those settings to your advantage to achieve the look you're looking for. And um, if you don't see a setting that um, you're looking for to modify, um it probably doesn't exist with the block without the assistance of code um but you can look at other blocks there to see if they would also uh be able to fulfill what you want the display to be um yeah other than that i just i can't stress enough strive away from that code stuff because um definitely i've seen a lot of horror stories with that for sure (laughs) yeah and and I think that's one of the double-edged swords uh, with WordPress is it doesn't limit you in any way, right? So right. Uh, that means if you want, you can get into the the heavy customization. Yeah. And mm-hmm. me personally, I'm not a developer, so that would instantly ruin my website beyond repair for me. Uh, but it gives you the ability that if you want to get in there and tinker around with that and play around with it, then you definitely can. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I think I think it's it's obviously a great tool, uh, and I think the block editor makes it even easier for someone like myself that doesn't have a deep developer background to create a website that uh, I I like and that I'm proud of. And then um, I'm going to advance the slides just one more. That it's just going to give some of the helplines that you can get from Bluehost. Uh, as we mentioned before, Greg is part of the professional services team, the WP live and the site builder team that helps people um, that want just a, a little bit more uh, do it for me slash do it yourself combination with someone guiding you through and if you're interested in that there is a, a little blue link at the top of the chat that says click here and um, you can jump in and and that will get you in from there um, it looks like we might have lost Greg for a second and he's back. There we go. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, I was wondering, I thought something weird was happening on my end. <laughs> no, no worries. Uh, we also have a couple other helplines that you can tune into and all of our webinars are uploaded to YouTube. So if you want to look into that, we do have other, um, deeper dives on some of the block editors. We have, uh, some, uh, a bunch of other content on there that can be helpful. Uh, so I want to keep this up as we get into our last question today, and that is, which plugin should I include when I'm building my WordPress website? We we talked about in the um, the dashboard how to go to plugins and, and mm-hmm. see those, but are there any specifically that you'd recommend for someone with their first WordPress website? Yeah, specifically, it really... Oh, it's- I can't really even give a specific answer more so because you just have to establish what the direction you want for this website. What a blog poster or a blog website needs is going to be different from an e-commerce website there, um, which is also going to be different from maybe your photo gallery or if you want to display like your arts and such. Um, What I can recommend is if you're kind of going to the blog uh, route there, Let's consider maybe MailPoet as a newsletter sign-up option, so that way you can get some uh, subscribers set and then be able to mail out your uh, blog post via email there. Um, anything else there? Yeah, MailPoet's really the only one I can recommend as a universal one there. Like I said, it's, there's so many possibilities you can go forth into it, so it's really hard to say what specific ones. Um, 
if you're looking to make a e-commerce website and sell shirts, hats, coffee mugs, whatever you want to sell, uh, WooCommerce is there to help make you a e-commerce platform without having to go forth into like using Shopify or anything else like that. I have one or two that I can think of. Um, if if uh, if you're thinking of any others, let me know. But um, I I think that Yoast is a big one. That's a, an SEO plugin. So mm -hmm. if you're doing Obviously, if you're doing like a family blog that you just want to be like a smaller thing, then that's not as important. But if you are doing something that you're trying to get a larger audience and more traffic to, then I'd highly recommend including Yoast SEO as uh, one of the plugins that you get. Uh, also, Jetpack can be another one that is is helpful at times to improve the the monitoring and the the performance of your website and it can also help with some spam settings as well so um other than that i think there's a there's a few different optimization uh, plugins out there depending on again what your website is if you're doing uh, some some high definition imagery that you want to include on your website then there's some plugins like smush i think is one of them S M S H that can help optimize those images so that your site still loads quickly even with uh the the large file sizes on there anything else that that came to your mind as i was running through those greg uh nothing else comes to mind there for me i think you hit the nail on those other ones for optimization purposes um may want to get something for security purposes well no i'm not even going to recommend that strike i even said that <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah security is important but there's a bunch of different ways that you can customize it and set it up and so yeah and it gets a little difficult to find the right plugin uh for security purposes as well so yeah okay and the, the only other thing that i wanted to very very briefly touch on is um Bluehost has introduced some new onboarding. So as people might uh, be setting up their website for the first time, uh, you might notice that it doesn't immediately put you into the WordPress dashboard. Um, first, it asks you a couple questions to get to know what kind of sites you want to build. And then it will oftentimes uh, create the framework and even add some content to your website to make things uh get you started on the right foot and then you can apply all the awesome stuff that Greg taught us about today of going into the block editor and customizing those and, and configuring them and, and populating it with your own content. But Greg, thank you so much for your time today. I, I sincerely appreciate it. Uh, thank you for everyone that tuned in and um, we appreciate your time and your attention. And uh, if there's anything else that we can ever do to present, uh, some a topic that you're interested in please just drop it in the chat and let us know we always want these to be engaging and educational for you and help you on your website building journey so that's what we want to be here for and we're grateful that you're here for that too so thank you everyone for tuning in and thank you greg one last time for joining us and we'll talk to everyone soon bye everyone bye everybody <laughs>